Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the Universe Club Grayskull Prince Adam. And this, my friends, seems like a fitting end. This is the final of the six last Club Grayskull Filmation style figures in the seven inch Masters of the Universe classic style. And it just seems right to end things off here with my reviews with He-Man's alter ego, Prince Adam. So let's do this, guys. As you can see, Prince Adam comes in that awesome Club Grayskull packaging, something that I always really appreciated. Uh, we got so many years there, what, 12 years of the Masters of the Universe Classics line that had the same blister card with the green bricks, and I know that that's great for people who collect those mint on card because the packaging never changed, but one thing I really liked, I think, about Club Grayskull was that we got a new box design. It just felt fresh and new, and I always thought they did a good job with this, switching from a blister card to a box. I think the Castle Grayskull motif is really, really cool. Uh, you know, I dig the slip cover. I dig uh, how the window is like the jaw bridge there. Uh, we even got like, you know, the inside of the castle behind the figure. He looks fantastic. And as you can see, we've got several accessories in the packaging. We even have an interchangeable head. When we rotate that around to the back, you got that great cartoon image of Prince Adam standing in front of Castle Grayskull as if he's about to say, my name is Adam, Prince of Eternia and Defender of the Secrets of Castle Grayskull. Oh, I love it. And down below that, we even have a brand new bio that gives you some backstory on the Prince Adam character. So, my friends, why don't we rip open this final figure and get a closer look at him. All right, here we are with Prince Adam outside of the packaging. Once again, we'll kick things off with the tape measure to see that the figure stands right there at the seven inch mark, basically matching all of the other figures in the line. So of course, this is inspired by the way Adam looked in the Filmation, He-Man, and the Masters of the Universe cartoon series, complete with those lavender tights and the bright pink vest over the white shirt. Now, I want to start this off with a bit of a comparison time, because a little while back at San Diego Comic-Con, Super 7 released an exclusive Laughing Prince Adam figure. That figure was, of course, inspired by the popular meme, the What's Going On meme, um, but at the time, we were promised by Super 7 that eventually we would get a proper Prince Adam, and here they are delivering on that promise. Looking at these two side by side, you can see there's quite a bit of difference going on here. Uh, first of all, the skin tone, so much better on the new Adam. It's like so orange on the laughing one, and I remember bringing that up back then. It's crazy looking at them side by side. Of course, we've got a more proper head sculpt now, but one of the big things I noticed is that the torso is different. Look at the muscles on the torso. And most importantly, the vest is different. The one that came with the Laughing Prince Adam was actually a repainted vest from the mini comic Prince Adam figure. Uh, so it's actually not accurate to the Filmation cartoon. The new Adam figure we have here has a much more Filmation accurate vest, uh, complete with the belt on there. So that is really nice. Now, one of the things we got to point out about that is that the back of the vest on the new figure is lacking a strap to holster the sword, while the Laughing Prince Adam had that strap. Now, again, he's got a strap because it's from the mini comic Prince Adam, which had that strap. Technically speaking, it's more cartoon accurate to not have a strap on the back of the figure. Now this, of course, will bring up a bit of debate. Should He-Man be able to store the power sword on his back so he can pull it off and say, by the power of Grayskull? Maybe, yes, but also I don't think we ever really saw the sword hanging off of his back like that, not by a strap at least. So we can't put the sword on his back, which I get is a bit of a bummer, but it is a bit more cartoon accurate to not have the strap. So it's kind of one of those like, which way do you prefer it kind of things on whether or not you're going to be disappointed by that or not. But I thought it was really interesting looking at these side by side with that Laughing Prince Adam. So you can see just how different these figures actually are. So, the uh, new face sculpt we got there, of course, is the He-Man face sculpt, which makes sense, but the skin tone's a little lighter, the hair is much more of a bright yellow color, uh, but it looks really, really good. And we're going to do this again, a comparison time between this and the He-Man figure, because I want to show you the faces there, but most importantly, I want to show you how 
shiny and glossy the He-Man figure is compared to this Prince Adam. I know one of the things a lot of people were complaining about with a lot of the earlier Super 7 figures was how glossy the plastic was. This new Adam figure, in fact, all the figures in this new wave don't seem to be near as glossy, but you can really see the difference between Adam here and that previously released He-Man. Part of that is that the skin tones on this Adam are painted rather than molded in that skin tone color, but it does look really nice as a result. Overall, the paint looks really good on this guy. Um, there might be some paint chipping only in places like uh, on the hands because you do have the hinge joints there. So be careful on that. Now, I don't really have any paint chipping yet, but when you've got painted skin tones on hands and you've got joints, it is something I'm always a little worried about that we're going to get a little bit of paint scraping there. But all in all, this guy looks really good. The colors are bright. Um, you know, they look like they match the cartoon very well. And all in all, it's a really nice looking cartoon accurate version of Prince Adam. So I mentioned those hinge joints. Why don't we go ahead and run down the articulation? You pretty much know what to expect here, most likely. Ball joint at the head, so you can move all the way around, left and right, good motion there. You do have really nice tight joints at the shoulder, so the arms can go forwards, backwards there. Uh, swivels at the bicep. You'll notice he does have that tunic, like I mentioned, that vest. It's a soft, pliable plastic. It is not meant to be removable, but it does not hinder the movement of the arms, which is really nice. You do got really tight joints there at the elbows, swivels at the wrist, and hinge joints at the wrist. Um, you'll notice over here on the right, we do have the normal hinge joint. Keep that in mind. We're going to come back to that. We do have an ab crunch, though it is a bit hindered by that vest. You can see it slightly moves, but it's kind of locked in place because that vest is pretty tight there. Uh, we can swivel at the waist. We do have those ball-like hinges there at the thighs, so legs can go outwards, forwards, backwards, and swivel. You do notice I got a little bit of paint rub here. I don't know if you can see it, but some of the purple from his pants are uh, rubbing off there on the tights underneath. Um, it mostly hides that. Not a big deal, I guess, if, especially if we're just posing it, but it is rubbing off a little bit, so be careful with that. Uh, we got nice tight joints at the knees there, kind of that ratchet joint thing going on. We got swivels at the boot cut. We got ankles that move forwards and backwards, as well as rock side to side. So all in all, the articulation is really nice on this guy. I don't have any floppy joints on here. They're tight. He stands up good. So that is really, really nice. So... We gotta talk about the interchangeable parts because this figure does include a few interchangeable pieces. First of all, we've got an alternate head with Adam here. Uh, we've got a smiley head. So if you'd rather pose your Adam with like a toothy smile, <laughs> you've got the option to do that. This works just like all of our classics figures, uh, you know, the Masters of the Universe Classics line. You can pop the head off the ball joint. You can grab the new one. You can pop it on in its place. Uh, the alternate head is very, very tight the first time. I really had to kind of like, give it a nice firm press to pop it onto that ball joint. And you can see like, even then it's pretty tight turning the head left and right. So you might even want to try the trick of warming it up with a, a hairdryer, low setting or warm water just to pop that on and off the first time. Uh, but otherwise it seems like it's working just fine. And the other head pops on and off with no problems at all. The other thing we've got an interchangeable part on is the right hand. And the reason for that, let me just show you real quick. It's just on a peg. We can take the new hand, we can pop it on in its place. This might be where you get a little paint rub. Look at that, I got a little bit of paint rub on the peg, not the hand itself, but it's worth noting that you might get some paint rub on that peg. Uh, but the reason he's got an interchangeable hand is because he's got that different hinge joint that allows his wrist to move up and down so that he can hold the power sword aloft for a by the power of Grayskull pose, which is fantastic. Something that we didn't see on that recent He-Man release that we all wanted, but it's perfect to have it for Adam because Adam's the one that holds the sword up to say by the power of Grayskull. So I'm really glad we've got it. So, hey, while we're at it, let's talk about his other accessories. Before we get to the power sword, which we know he's gonna have, he does also come with a shield. So this is the same shield that we got with the Ultimate Filmation He-Man, but this one's not painted. Uh, there's no red on there or anything like that. It's all just molded in the gray plastic, but of course he can hold onto the handle on the back there. So if he needs to take cover with a shield, you've got a shield to do just that. And then, of course, we've got the power sword. And yes, he does come with the standard gray filmation power sword, just like He-Man. He doesn't get a magenta one like the vintage figure, which is good because this matches filmation. Um, so that sword is a bit loose in the hand. Just like we had with He-Man. Now he holds on to it fine. You can still find good poses. And again, you can get him uh, to, you know, really properly hold the sword aloft. So you can get some really good by the power of Grayskull poses, which is 
absolutely perfect. And that is going to bring us to the next accessory, which, in my opinion, is the best accessory. So we got the regular power sword, but we've also got this power sword with this electric blast. How cool is that? Okay, so before we plug this on his hand, I want to show you something. That blast effect is removable from the sword. And the sword, worth noting, is a different sculpt. It's a little bit longer and a little bit thinner because it's made for that electrical burst to be around it there, I guess. So it's shaped a little bit different. Um, I was kind of surprised. I didn't know it was going to be so different looking. So it is a different sculpt than the other power sword, the normal one. But all of the little electrical bits, you can see there's like little uh, gaps in there that are meant to perfectly attach to the blade. So you just got to find all the right spots. There we go right there. Kind of like just holds in place. You can clip it right here on this bottom portion. And just like that, we've got our lightning blast all attached. Uh, very cool, cool looking accessory. And of course, we got to get the hand uh, holding onto that sword. We'll get him holding it aloft. So now we can get a proper by the power of Grayskull Pose. And this is where things get even better. That lightning effect glows in the dark. So if we turn off all the lights, we've got a nice bright glow for that electrical blast that's forming around his sword. It is such a cool little bonus accessory. A great way to pose this particular figure. I probably will pose him this way. I imagine a lot of people might want to do that. Totally recreating one of the most iconic scenes from the classic animation. It's really, really cool. All right, guys, how about we do a little bit more comparison time? Let's go ahead and stand this new Prince Adam alongside the vintage Prince Adam action figure from the 80s over there on the right in the magenta vest, as well as the more recent filmation style vintage figure from Super 7 in the pink vest, just so you can see what this looks like with those vintage figures. And of course, I also want to put him alongside the Masters of the Universe Classics Prince Adam, which was more inspired by the vintage toy, so you can see just how different the animation version is compared to that version. And you know what? We've got four different Prince Adam figures now in this 7-inch scale, so we'll just line them all up here in a row so you can see just how different all four figures are. So there you go, my friends. There is a look at the Club Grayskull Prince Adam action figure from Super 7. The final Club Grayskull figure in this particular set. These were the final six figures as of right now. It seems like Masters of the Universe Classics and the Club Grayskull Filmation figures are done. They're on hiatus. Mattel's going to be launching their brand new Origins line, which is in that vintage scale. So these very well could be the final figures that we got. I felt it was most appropriate to end with Adam, since, you know, he's basically our main character there, He-Man. Uh, this is a really nice action figure. I love having him. I think it's so cool getting the animated counterpart to our animated He-Man. I really love that blast effect ac accessory there. Man, posing him in front of Castle Grayskull is just so cool. It just makes me so happy seeing this pose. It's one of those, like, really make you feel like a little kid moments. Just kind of posing him in that pose there. It's really, really satisfying. So these final Club Grayskull action figures were sold exclusively on Super 7's website through pre-order only. They were $35 originally. At this point, you're only going to be able to find them on the aftermarket where I believe he's selling for around the $50 price point. So happy hunting, my friends. Guys, thank you so very much for joining me for another Club Grayskull review. Thank you guys so much for all your support, for watching all of these videos. And just because we're ending here, don't worry. There's going to be plenty more Masters of the Universe content on this channel. Good journey, my friends.